are discussing reaction equilibria. In particular, we are discussing ammonia synthesis. Here we were discussing both the reaction and phase equilibria. So we said uh, you have these gases coming in, you mix them, and you compress them. Goes through a reactor. This goes to a separator. Let's say this is the work. This is my reactor. I have or Q removed from here. This is a condenser, and there is a WS dot. So, if you're doing an overall analysis of the process, first of all, let me discuss these individually. As far as the reactor is concerned, we said K y is equal to not K y, K n I think. Included the mole numbers, it is we said At equilibrium, we had uh, half into 1 minus x, this is 3 by 2 into 1 minus x, and this is x. We had essentially k n okay, k n is suppose I want k y the total moles this is 2 minus x. <coughs> so, you had 2 minus x into x divided by this is 1 minus x to the power half this is 1 minus x to the power 3 by 2 times there is a half, there is a 3 by 2 to the power 3 by 2. Half of 1 minus x by 2 minus x, and then 3 by 2 into 1 minus x by 2 minus x to the power 3 by 2, this is to the power half. And this is half, sorry. So, this whole thing is 4 by 3 root 3. Can we erase this and write this as 4 by 3 root 3? This is equal to, this is just from the definition, equal to p times, is it p or 1 by p? It is p to the power um, minus 1 will be here. So, it is p times k f by k f e. I told you when you plot this, that is if you plot y ammonia which is 1 minus x by 2 minus x. This is y in the reactor versus pressure. You get a curve that looks like this. As far as the separator is concerned, 
you have y separator is equal to effectively you get p saturation for ammonia by p times exponential of b liquid minus b into p minus p saturation by rt. So, at p saturation it becomes 1 then it comes down it goes like this. This curve is y separator. Actually the y separator would go exponentially up but it falls down if you take into account third virial coefficient. So, you have to do this correctly. I will put it in the assignment, I will put in special assignment with additional problems. This region of feasible operation that is there is a p minimum and a p maximum between which the mole fraction coming out of the reactor is higher than the mole fraction required in the condenser for you to produce liquid ammonia that is the range of feasible operation. This is typical of coupling in the chemical industry where this has only reaction requirements. So, you can alter its condition so that you get some optimal output, but you have a subsequent uh, equipment that does phase separation and it has its own requirements and you have to meet both requirements in order to meet the technological output needs. You also notice that if I did this, this is always typical the problem is always simpler if you can use a larger system. If I use the entire thing as a system this is my plant I get hydrogen and nitrogen and I supply ammonia that is all I care about and finally this ammonia is supplied at room temperature these enter at room temperature if any heating is required I do it in between. If I do that then you know that this is an isothermal process effectively 25 degrees so W s dot is is equal to m dot times delta g with a minus sign. So, all I need is g for delta g for this process that is I have to take the chemical potential of ammonia at 25 degrees in one atmosphere subtract from it the chemical potential of these in the ratio 1 is to 3 and I take x I take 1 mole there I take 1 3 by 2 moles and 1 half if I subtract the chemical potentials then I get exactly delta G you have to verify what you need to do is this this is the energy requirement actually I am only interested in W s dot by m dot and you can take a look at the cost of energy at present T and E B rates and ask if the price of ammonia in the market corresponds to this there will be a factor which is greater than 1, but you will find there is a strict proportionality that is what I was talking to you about at the beginning. Separation controls most of the cost, but it is a very important to process and this ammonia goes on into a urea reactor you get ammonia plus carbon dioxide. What is urea is CO NH2 twice is it forgotten NH2 huh? oh, CO NH2 Ah, that is what I thought C O N H 2 twice and do the balancing is 1 oxygen extra no 2 and what else is extra C is ok O is ok it is direct synthesis is it N H 2 twice is there a H 2 left. So, plus water If you do I do not know if you know that in the Madras refineries this ammonia comes in in one place and they have this reactor carbon dioxide is supplied to the reactor these two are mixed always and sent to the reactor and out of this urea comes out of course H 2 O there is a reactor bend and this is also done at very high pressure and it turned out that the valve 
uh, for this was located here in uh, this was long ago about 20 years ago we have a madras fertilizers here we make this plant and they had a control room here and control rooms are not so recent i mean they've been around for many years so this is what 80s thing early 80s or so we had somebody come and talk to us there was an accident in madras fertilizers when this hot area urea see the urea was com coming out here and taking a bend and at this point by erosion the pipe had completely eroded then this broke the urea came in it broke the glass here and uh, about three people three scientists were killed here in the inside the control room I mean, before they could escape and after, afterwards everything was brought under control but it's a very elementary thing i just mentioned this after that after a great study with huge committee and all that they said the mistake lies in placing the valve here this valve should be here because valves are always inspected the inside of pipelines are not inspected regularly so when the valve corrodes it will start leaking as soon as it leaks you can fix it in this case you don't notice that this is corroded at all till suddenly the whole thing blows because this valve doesn't leak okay let me discuss a couple of other problems there's one other i wanted to discuss i brought some data yesterday and the second is isomerization this is actually more typical it's a very simple problem this is butane to n butane i mean n butane to isobutane then 2% hcl this must be coming from another stream in uh, isobutane here they have uh, the question is the temperature is given 300 degrees oh, it's given fahrenheit but doesn't matter uh, delta g0 is known for this reaction at this condition 97.5 calories per gram mole the reaction is n butane to isobutane this is just calories per gram mole not kilo calories because it's just an isomerization reaction so delta g delta h are very small next problem i don't turn these things wrong turn the data wrong so i have to go back and look at it okay we'll just look at this problem again in this case you have all i have to do is write down here butane is the n butane then isobutane and hcl so let's assume that i have 1 mole here and 0 actually it's not 1 mole and this thing it's 0.93 moles and 0 0.05 moles initially at equilibrium i have 0 0.93 minus x and this is 0 0.05 plus x and you can put down hcl is 2 or 0 0.02 0 0.02 total moles remains unchanged you have kf is equal to exponential of minus 97.5 by rt I don't know if I delta g is positive or negative you return a positive number does not matter it is a small number so again your kf would be simply p p by n t to the power 0 no change in number of moles so pressure and total moles cannot affect the reaction so you cannot alter this reaction by altering inerts inerts is one form of control that you have then uh, 
there is no point changing the pressure, so it will be carried out at atmospheric pressure times k n uh, k phi if you like since pressure does not matter nobody will bother to use high pressure. So, k phi will be 1 and then you have only k n k n is 0 0.05 this is the plus x by 0 0.93 minus x that is it there is no nothing else this is equal to kf kf of course is constant this is known this is 1 this is 1 so all you have to do is calculate x just add these two you get 0.05 plus x by 0 0.98 is equal to kf by 1 plus kf and then you have a k x calculation you have to use r and t in the right units do not mix make a mess of that the trouble in reaction equilibrium is if you use somebody puts in 0 0.08 in liter atmospheres instead of calories then your number will be so different that I cannot give you any credit for it because ultimately in engineering the order of magnitude of the number is important and in these cases since you have never worked in the industry you have no feel for those numbers. So, you will have to be familiar with the numbers and make sure you do not make mistakes in the units. Normally for number numerical mistakes I do not give I do not punish you but if the uh, if it is order of magnitude off you will get a minus 1. So, be careful as far as that is concerned. So, these are the kf is exponential of minus delta g by rt k phi is 1 because pressure has no effect you would be foolish to use any high pressure right essentially p has no effect industry never uses uh, therefore p would be approximately 1 atmosphere whatever is convenient usually low at pressure will be used and the invariably chemical engineers and chemists are blamed for all pollution the thing to remember is that you are not polluting there for your own benefit you are actually minimizing the pollution that anyway would occur because if finally a plastic bucket is made only because the consumer wants it the question is making the plastic bucket what is the minimum pollution you will create I mean it's, you cannot not pollute the environment if you want a plastic bucket. Okay, let me discuss this other problem this is both phase and reaction equilibrium problem told you about uh, chloromethanes I forgot to bring the data with me this is actually a consultancy that I did many years ago it is quite long time since I did any consultancy what you have essentially is a reactor in which you have methane and chlorine. these are not mixed pre mixed usually because chlorine is a dangerous chemical. So, you have one reactor which has all the provisions for safety. So, you send them in otherwise normally the ingredients are pre mixed because in chemical reaction engineering the important thing is mixing. The product that comes out is several things you have four reactions I mean it is essentially corresponding to the number of chlorine atoms you can add C H 3 C L plus H C L. then you can add you can add more chlorine you get CH2 Cl2 plus HCl CHCl3 plus HCl and then CCl4 plus HCl. Essentially in the reaction you will just get I will write strike off HCl plus HCl common tolerance. So, you get all these you get all possible forms of chlorinated methane. Now, this whole thing is then sent to a distillation column distillation column has many trays what you do is pull out at different points a component this will be essentially CCL4 
because it is the least volatile of the compounds. When I say CCL4, it will not be pure CCL4, it will be 99.9% .9 and so on. The other components will be present and on top of course, you will get HCl and then CH3Cl, suppose I need one more thing, CH2Cl2 and CH3L3. In general, in all distillation columns, you a certain amount of the top thing is fed back. What you do is actually not take out HCl like this, you pass this through a condenser and part of it is taken out as product, part of it is recycled. Actually, this is called reflux. You reflux the product back and by controlling the reflux, you can control the composition of the products. You will do that anyway in mass transfer. Similarly, this bottom product is also not taken out as is normally what happens is you have to supply energy somewhere, you take out energy here, this is a condenser, and then you have uh, this is called reboiler. It, uh, reboils the bottom product if you like and part of it is taken out and the remaining goes back as vapor to the distillation column. Normally because the latent heats molar latent heats of compounds are somewhat equal, you will find the amount of heat taken out in the condenser and the amount of heat are comparable, but this is at a higher temperature you are supplying the heat here you are getting it at lower temperature. So, there is a loss of availability that is there is a loss of energy in terms of what is available for you to do work. At higher temperature the quality of heat is better than lower temperature. This is actually the this part of it is fairly straightforward. You do these reactions you have to assume that x1, x2, x3 let us assume x1 moles are formed x2 moles x3 and x4 okay, we will call this 1, 2, 3, 4 call this 5 if you like, this is 6, this is 7. So, what you have in the product, reactor product, which is what counts at equilibrium, assume you are doing a calculation at equilibrium. So, you have um, CH4, You will get essentially CH4 will be let us start with 1 mole of um, this and A moles of chlorine. I want to know if I can choose this A suitably. So, you will get 1 minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 minus x4 that is the methane part. The chlorine will be A. 1 mole of chlorine will be used up here, here you will have 2 moles used up right, CH2 Cl2 plus 2 HCl or 3 by 2 right. So, you will get minus x1 minus 3 by 2 x2, maybe we should write this out. For every mole here you have got 2 moles of chlorine used up. No, here it is half sorry, A minus x1 by 2 minus x2, then CHCLC this takes 3 by 2 moles minus 3 by 2 x3 minus 2 x4. Pardon? No, CH3Cl. Oh, then here also I must, so all of them must be corrected. This one is x1, this one is what? Cl2, 2 HCl, so Cl2 plus Cl2, 2. Then next one, next one will be CHCl3, so 3 by 2 here and 3 HCl, right? So 3 and 4 this one. I think that is all right, yeah. 
it is always best to be careful with reaction equilibria, <laughs> do not carelessly write what I wrote. But I mean if your life depended on it, you will spend time writing it correctly, so it is not. Then HCl is uh, x1 plus 2 x2 plus 3 x3 plus 4 x4, right? 2, 3, 4, correct. And then you have to write these down, of course. CH3 Cl is x1, CH2 Cl2 is x2, CH Cl3 equal to x3 and C Cl4 equal to x4. all are in the gas phase. So, you can do a summation you will get 1 plus A minus x 1 hmm? hmm. oh, ok all of it is balanced out. Okay, fine. So, essentially, if there is no, is there, a, there is no change in moles in any of the reactions. So, you have to write down for each of them K of 1 is equal to, let us assume that the pressure is low. It is because none of them are affected by pressure, you would be foolish using any pressure, it will be you will necessarily use a low pressure. So, your K of 1 will be essentially P by N T will be equal to K N, right. K phi is 1, K N times P by N T to the power change in number of moles, because change in number of moles is 0, this is simply K N, K N 1 is you have the product, it is X 1 times HCl, this is x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus 4x4 divided by you have uh, CH4 which is 1 minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 minus x4. and the Cl2 was yeah. This is equal to of course, exponential of minus delta G1 0 by RT. So, you will simply similarly write K n 2 Kn3 and Kn4. I won't write these out. In each case, this will be exponential of minus delta G2 by. I'll say and so on. So if I give you the temperature, you can essentially solve for x1, x2, x3, etc. There is no effect of the total moles, but you still have an effect of A on the tell me what uh, will determine A. I mean, what considerations will you base your cho choice of A on? Just common sense. that is your desirable product, but from here you are using two raw materials. Simply because of mass action you will use the cheaper material in excess. <laughs> so, what you will do here is really use the cost of the raw material usually and also chlorine in excess is dangerous for the environment. So, in this case you would go with 
methane. So, you would go with the minimum chlorine requirement. So, you probably use a the stoichiometric amount of chlorine required, but it is a useful computation to do to see how sensitive the calculations are to the ratio A is to 1. Coming back what you do is solve this for the reaction equilibrium and this again is coupled to this. I will tell you another interesting anecdote here. This is chemical industry practice is full of this only thing is you have to do careful calculations. The calculations are trivial in thermodynamics. Here you can design this distillation column you will do this next semester and this is not a problem at all because this mixture happens to be an ideal mixture because these are very similar compounds. These are chlorinated methanes and they all mix ideally. So, gamma in this case in this case phi all your fugacity coefficients everything will come out to be 1. So, you are only treating the system that is you have liquid phase because you are using a distillation column you are taking out a liquid product. This product is CCL4 and uh, and they were making CCL4 you are making CCL4 of 99.99 percent purity. Gujarat fertilizer started a new unit and they were supplying 99.9999 purity. And this last two nines are important for the pharmaceutical industry. Their purity is of great importance and you will find that if you want to go from 99.99 to 99.9999 you will the number of plates will increase tremendously. That last bit of purification is what requires large number of plates. You need a large number of equilibrium stages because your incremental purification is very small. Manage it use the general manager there and he called me and said uh, we have this problem will you look at it. So, I look at looked at this problem calculate the distillation column design calculate the purity that you should get. They had some 74 plates in the column for 99.9 .9 I calculated from theory Trebal you have a mass transfer book practically a worked example you can do the calculation straight away. So, I did these calculations and I said 43 plates will do you got 31 plates extra he said it cannot be then I also told him if you do have 74 plates as you tell me your purity should be 0.49 it cannot be what you are getting. I told him 30 of your plates must not be working the way these works I told you what you have is every plate looks like this you have liquid and uh, this gas vapor comes from here it has to bubble through this liquid cannot go out this way it will go out I mean the vapor will go out this way right. So, it bubbles through the liquid and escapes to the next this thing each of these is called a bubble cap you have a cap here. So, when the when it there is a hole in the plate and the vapor comes through there is a cap preventing it. So, it will have to go out and come through the liquid, but if the caps are not in place this vapor will shoot right through and you would not have contact with the liquid two days later they opened in exactly 30 plates they had forgotten to put this cap. <laughs> this was assembled during immediately after the war and they had the workers had forgotten to put that cap there, but because the market requirement was only 99.99 percent and it was working well. So, they never bothered I mean it was still. <laughs> so, there are many practical problems in operation, but here what you will do is you calculate the reactor contribution this thing calculation you have to first maximize your CCL4 production because in this particular case the other products were not so saleable it depends on the market conditions. I mean there was very little demand for chloroform and most of the demand was for CCL4 these two were not in demand at all. So, you will try to reduce this as much as possible do the chlorination so that you take this more to X3 and X4 and X4 will be the maximum. So, you can play with this and ask what will alter X4 most of the times you cannot control it because your A is the only variable that you had in your equations by changing A you cannot alter much. So, you will be stuck with a certain fraction of CCL4 which you have to extract. 